Dear friend, you are welcome again to my channel. Today, we are going to learn how to size a solar power system. Okay, so before you can construct any meaningful solar power system, you first of all have to know the size or the capacity of the various components you need to put together to give out the power that is required. All right. And what you need to be able to determine the size of these components is the power consumption demand of the load or the number of loads that you have to power with your solar system. Okay, so in this video, we are going to look at how to construct a solar power system for a small household. And to be able to do that perfectly, the first thing we need to do is to calculate the load demand in that house. Then one other important thing we need to know before starting the calculation is to know whether our solar power system is going to be a hybrid system, a great tide system, or a standalone system. In other words, an off-grid system. All right, so I'll be explaining these different aspects as I go on with this series. Okay, so in this video, let's consider our system as an off-grid system, which means that day and night, at every time, we are going to depend on the solar power to supply our loads. And so what this means is that, apart from our solar panel that will generate electricity from the sun, we will also need storage batteries that will store electricity that is produced from the panel during the day so that when the panel is not working, the batteries will now work with the inverter to supply power to the loads. All right, so to be able to calculate the load demand of the system, first of all, we'll be looking at the various appliances that we have in that household that will need to be supplied electricity on a daily basis. All right, so for this small household, let's assume that we have two LED lamps that are rated 9 watts each. And we also have a fan that is rated 60 watts. Then we also have a refrigerator that is rated 75 watts. Okay, so basically these are the things that we are using in that small house that we want to connect our solar system to. All right. So now we are using two lamps, one fan, and then one refrigerator. All right, so the next thing we'll do is that we are going to look at how many hours each of these appliances will be used in a day. All right, so now let's assume that our two bulbs will be used for a maximum of four hours in a day. And then our fan will be used for a maximum of two hours in a day. And then our refrigerator will be used 24 hours in a day. But then... With the refrigerator, there is a thermostat that controls the compressor. And so we assume that the compressor will work for 12 hours and will be off for 12 hours. So in doing the calculation, we are going to use 12 hours instead of 24 hours. All right, so let's do it like this. First, we have lamp one, which is nine watts multiplied by four hours. So we'll get 36 watt hours from that lamp alone. Then the next lamp is also 9 watt, and we are using it for 4 hours in a day. So that will also give us 36 watt hours. Then we go to our fan. Our fan is rated 60 watt, and we are using it for 2 hours. So that will also give us 120 watt hours. And then... Our refrigerator is 75 watts, and we are using it for 12 hours, which will give us a total of 900 watt hours. And I explained that the compressor doesn't work 24 hours because of the thermostat. It cuts and then starts again. All right. So then, when sizing a PV system, you have to be very careful because you don't want power that you will not use from a solar power system. Solar power system is very expensive. And so you make sure that you make provision for what you want. If the system is bigger than what you need to consume, it's far better. But it also goes with high cost. And the worst thing you don't want to do 
is to undersize your solar power system. Because if you do that, it will be cheaper, but you cannot use the system for a long time. So here, we have 36 plus 36 watt hours will give us 72 watt hours. So from our two lamps, we have a total of 72 watt hours per day. Then from our fan, we have a total of 120 watt hours per day. Then from our refrigerator, we have a total of 900 watt hours per day. All right. So now the next thing we do is that we add all the watt hours together. And then adding all these together, we have 72 plus 120 plus 900. And there we have 1,092 watt hours. All right. So the first item we'll consider here is our storage system. And so we'll first calculate the size and number of batteries that we will need for this particular system. All right, so for our battery size, we need a battery that can supply 1,092 hours every day for our loads. But usually for a standalone system, you may need enough backup for days of autonomy. And what this means is that on days that you will not have enough sun to enable the panels to charge your batteries, there should be enough storage to be able to power your loads during those days that the sun may not show up to charge your batteries. Determining the days of autonomy will also depend on your location because there are certain locations that almost every day of the year, there is a substantial amount of sunshine that will enable your panels to charge your batteries. And so in such locations, go ahead to calculate your battery size using the watt hour value that we have gotten from the calculation. But in case you are in a location where for two days or for three days, it is likely that the sun will not show up to enable your panels to charge your batteries, then you have to apply two days of autonomy or three days of autonomy. And that will mean that you are going to multiply the days of autonomy by the energy that is required within a day or the watt hour that is required within a day. And that is what you are going to use for your battery size. But in our case here, we assume that there will be enough sunshine to enable our panels to charge our batteries on daily basis. All right, so let's see what battery size and how many of them we need for this system. So first of all, we will have to select a battery size that we want to use. And so let's assume that we are going for a 100 amp hour 12 volt lithium battery. Okay, so to get the watt hour rating of this battery, we are going to multiply 100 amp hour by 12 volts. Okay, so 100 amp hour by 12 volts will give us 1,200 watt hours. So looking at the watt hour of our battery, one of these batteries will be able to store energy enough to be able to supply our loads for one day. But you must also take note that if I had chosen to use a lead acid battery, then I would definitely need at least two of the 100 amp hour to be able to do the same work. I'll be talking about batteries in another video and I'll explain why. What about the solar array? How many panels do we need? What size of panels do we need? Okay, typically we want a solar array that will be able to charge our battery fully within five hours or less. So what we do here is that we divide our battery capacity by five hours. All right, so the capacity of battery we are going to use in the system is 1,200 watt hours. And so we divide 1,200 watt hours by five hours to get the power rating of the solar array that will be able to charge these panels within five hours. So here, 1,200 watt hours divided by five hours will give us 240 watts. So this is the minimum size of solar array that we should use for this system. All right, so the next thing we consider now is the charge controller. What size of charge controller do we need for this system? All right, so to get a size of charge controller we need for our system, we would have to divide the wattage rating of the solar array by the battery voltage. So here, the power from the solar array is 240 watts. 
And so we divide 240 watts by 12. And 240 watts divided by 12 gives us 20 amps. All right, so if we have a 20 amp controller, it should be able to help us to charge our battery within five hours. Now, the last component we are left with is the inverter. So here, we would have to choose an inverter that is not less than the wattage rating of the solar array. Okay, so this is a very simple way to design your solar power system. But then whatever values we got in the calculation should be the minimum when selecting the items for the installation. And also, I couldn't have said everything in this short video. So as time goes on, we'll be taking the components one by one and then we'll be looking at them. Then, one thing we must also understand is that in every electrical component, there is what we call deficiencies. So for instance, when you take a battery like this, even the lithium battery is not 100% efficient. The panels are not 100% efficient. The charge controller is not 100% efficient. The inverter is not 100% efficient. So whatever value we got in the calculation should be the minimum in that you must make room for losses. So that at the end of the day, your system will work perfectly per your load demand. All right, so thank you very much for watching this video. Please, if you have really learned something new from this video, kindly hit on the like button, share the video with your friends, and subscribe to stay connected. See you in my next video.